What's up, my family? Tom Arno on HUD Radio. Here to talk to you about Manscaped. Love their products, especially the Lawnmower 4.0. Just got mine in. You try to go and use a regular razor, it's bloody. Ain't nobody got time for that. You're all nicked up. Not a good time. Lawnmower 4.0, I'm walking around feeling delicious. Look, take a look. Uh, just got you. Got you, got you. But Manscaped, you'll be taken care of head to toe, guaranteed. Get 20% off and free shipping with code HUD at manscaped.com. Go check them out. What about it? My perfect analogy for Sirianni right now, fam, is I feel like this dude wants to be the best camp counselor at summer camp and wants to be cool with the kids. That's that's the thing that I, that's that's what I believe. I believe he wants to be cool with the kids. I think he did, he wants to be the coolest guy on the block. He wants to be have his players view him as, as one of the guys. Listen, Nick, you're not one of the guys. You're, you're, you're the guy in charge of these guys, and you need to do better and put them in a position to be able to win a game. The reason why I think Atlanta was so successful, they had so much time to prepare. So much time to prepare. You had that on your schedule. You knew that was the first game since training camp started. That was eight to ten weeks before. And then now, as you get in week in week to uh, week, week, and then you, my perfect example is what he said on on, on Monday night. I had to keep up with their offense. Motherfucker, what? <laughs> huh? They put up 20 points against the Chargers. 20. I mean, now, if you would have said that, regardless, I don't even want you to say that about any team. I don't even want you to say that about the team that's coming here to play on Sunday at the link. You need to focus on what your team can do well. You need to focus on what your team can do well. So that way you can negate what they do well and try to win the football game. 60 minutes. You can be the inferior team and win a football game and steal one. This dude, for whatever reason, and we talked about it, the outside influence, I know you're going to get into it because you were listening to, to, to the dial today. He's getting outside influence from somewhere, Jake. Mm-hmm. I don't know where. He's getting outside influence from somewhere, but that's leaking into his game plan. He's not a man that can stand on his own two feet which scares me, but the, the same thing is, like I said, that's even more fault to the poll question because Jeff and Howie have seen and hired guys that can stand on their own two feet, and that's what scares them. So if you want to win football games with the best head coaches out there and the best personality to represent 53 men on that final day roster, not counting what you go through training camp, Jeff and Howie need to take a step back, but that's never going to fucking happen, bro. Uh Matt Spillman also says Howie and Jeff make the make the game plan. Uh, they that can't happen. Period. That's how much they have their hands in the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean there was the report that came out for people that don't know that Jeff McClain wrote to where when Doug Peterson was here going back to the Green Bay game, mm-hmm. Jeff wasn't happy because he said Doug was running the ball too much. Now again, th- he wasn't actually quoted saying that, but that's the report. Now, whether it be true or false, we don't know. And it's also Jeff McLean, so we get it if you're a little skeptical. But well, when you see a recurring pattern to where Peterson won the Super Bowl in 2017, now again, like Pete, like Pete said, yes, it was a fluke year and everything. It was the perfect storm, so I get it. But to fire your coach just after <clears throat> three seasons and <laughs> only two after coming off a Super Bowl in his first bad season. Now, Carson Wentz, I get. Because right. right now, Carson Wentz isn't looking too good. And I completely get it. And right I, just now, need to look, I need you to look bad for 10 more games. Right, exactly. Give me, give me well, the 75%. I might need them to win on Sunday. I might need them to win on Sunday just so they don't have to resort to benching him. Because I don't want them to go 0-17. Because then you know for a fact Carson Wentz isn't playing. <laughs> but I need them to win at least a couple games. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Because apparently from what, like I said earlier, what the report said, him and... Peterson and Howie and uh, Jeff didn't really get along towards the end. And right. it was just a boiling point, I think, towards the end of the season to where it couldn't work anymore. And Doug wanted a bigger role, which he absolutely deserved for winning us our first Super Bowl in team history. I completely understand. And they're just like, no, no. Right. So now Peterson takes a year off. Will he come back as a head coach? I, th- I think so. Me personally, I believe so. If he says he wants to come back and coach again, he's going to be the number one coaching candidate next year. If he does yeah, say he because wants to come you back have a year coach. removed 
from what his what your recency bias and what was the what what you had done for me lately, and yet mm-hmm. he still has the same resume. And like you said, he left and we we say fired, but he gave Jeff no choice. But he really didn't want because he wanted out of that situation. He wanted mm-hmm. out of that relationship. He wanted out of that. I don't have a voice. I don't want to have to meet with you every week and then quite you question me why right. we did this. Mm-hmm. If you're watching, and this is this is now this is another thing. If he's there every practice, his eyes can see what's going on, right? Yeah. So you can see when it's going right and it's executed right. And when you watch on Sunday from the press box and you see shit ain't going away that you want, you've been the owner for how many years, Jeff? You mean to tell me you haven't picked up on some of this shit yet? 